Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Um, just finishing up another week and uh, had a couple of engines uh, rebuilt this week and one that needed uh, pushrod rubbers and it turned into cam followers and so it goes on. Um, but it just interests me the difference between different models and what they do and how. So these three cam followers here are out of a 1976 um, R90S. Um, it's had a complete engine rebuilt and um, I can't just find the other cam follower at the moment. It's in the box of stuff I took out, but I just can't put my hand on it. But it kind of looks in between the one on the left and the one in the middle. Um, the two on the right-hand side here, they're exhaust valve um, followers. And they're quite worn. They're worn through almost the, the case hardening. Like, um, I'm not prepared to have them polished or reuse them or anything like that. These four here, on the other hand, are out of a what purports to be a 17,000 kilometre uh, R100R, a 1996 model. Now, they're a bit kind of filmy, but you can see the chips in that one there. If you look, you can see the centre is going out of this one here. And these ones have got some wear and scratch marks and things in them too. Now... As our bikes are getting older, the whole thing about this um, cam follower thing is becoming more of a mis an issue every day because now our bikes are somewhere between 45 and, and 25 years of age. And uh, what I'm seeing more and more is the low mileage late model bikes are actually having this issue more and more and more. And the only thing that I can think of, I know they had a reputation for being hard, or too hard, some of them, uh, is that if they sit for a long period of time and don't do much mileage, when they start, they start dry. And they start dry on the camshaft and, um, you know, I guess they give up because they're too hard. This is a moderate kilometer bike it's it's uh, 76 so you know it's 40 years old 43 years old and it was very worn in the bores um worn in the cam followers it hasn't done a high mileage i think it's done under 100,000 kilometers from memory but the bores were worn quite quite well worn actually they probably had to go to second oversize if we were going to rebore it and again, I, I'm just wondering if that isn't because the bike didn't see a lot of work. And when it did get started, you know, it, it wore quite severely um, until it got the oil all around itself. And I don't know. It's a funny old story. But these cam followers are getting harder and harder to find. And they're getting more and more expensive. Um, they're chill cast, uh, which is uh, they use a virtually white hot molten metal into a, into a chilled um, former pressed. And then they're finished, that makes them very dense and very hard, and then they're finished off in a machine shop. They're properly hardened and then polished and finished, and they come ready to go on the bike. Well, you've got to clean a bit of protective crap off them, but yeah. So when I see, and I'm on quite a few um, US sites that, uh, where you know, people get a beautiful-looking old barn find that's cleaned up lovely, and people say, just throw some fuel in it and ride it, man. Uh, not for my money, I wouldn't, not in this country, and I live in Australia, but um, these things here can take your engine out in one foul swoop. If they shed and get sucked, the bits get sucked back up through the oil strainer into the oil pump, it'll destroy your oil pump and possibly your oil pump housing and uh, a few other things on the way through. So have a think about it. You know, if you're pulling your engine down, uh, I saw a video recently on one of the BMW uh, classic ride groups and the guy was rebuilding the engine doing a wonderful job of it until he got to the followers and the bottom of the followers looked like a bloody cricket pitch. It was all cracked and chipped and buggered and he was putting them back in the engine. So I don't know, not my way to do things, but I just thought I'd share it. Ride safely, stay well, have a great weekend.